pretty high draft pick, has the talent. Um, but when you know, for whatever reason, you talked a little bit about it yesterday. You know, it didn't work out like he would have liked, I'm sure. With the Raiders, you talked about some of the scheme. You talked about him not handling adversity, maybe great. But when you get him, I mean, do you sit down and say, try to figure out you know, why hasn't this worked, and how can we unlock what is clearly some potential there? Um, not necessarily as much as that. It's just kind of telling him, you know, what type of player I see him and tell you know, how I see him and what type of skill set I see him having and um, how can we get there from this point moving forward. You know, I talked to him a lot about what I thought about him in college and then, you know, some of the things that I've seen in the NFL and I'm not really concerned about what happened previous before he got here. You know, with me, I kind of, I kind of start with a blank slate approach. Uh, I try not to put too much judgment on anything that's happened before, you know, my, my interaction with him, how he goes to work for me, and then just the daily grind and, and, the, and you know, taking, uh, stacking one day on top of the next and not looking too far behind, not looking too far ahead. And um, so I just kind of laid out what I saw and, um, you know, in his skill set and um, things that, you know, that I'd heard about him and this and that. And um, the has been great. I mean, we, we, shoot, he's uh, energy. He's, he brings energy to the room. He brings energy to the practice field. I think he has a skill set to, to really help us, you know, in the in the uh, in the um, scheme. And um, you know, he's a great fit. I'm glad we got him. With with Nick, it, it seemed like he was obviously kind of ahead of the curve for for a rookie his first year. But missing last year, what are some things that maybe he missed out on that could have helped him take a, a, a jump to the next level? And what are your expectations? For him? Just you know. The second year of experience coming off a rookie year, um, you know, you know, you go through a rookie year, and, and Nick, Nick at times, you know, on the field might have made it, you know, his rookie year look easy, but it's never easy. It's uh, the most difficult year an NFL player goes through is his rookie year because of the swarm of information, the, the getting used to the way the NFL works, getting used to you know different environment, getting used to you know different teammates. It's a it's a whirlwind, and Nick made it look easy, but you know it wasn't quite as easy as what he made you know he made it seem on the field. Um, so just getting that second year under his belt, where everything's calmed down, and now he can really just hone in on on you know some of the small technical aspects of his game, and just then, then just get more experience underneath his belt. You know, just uh, games played, and, and being able to see different opponents and pick up on little different things. You know throughout games, during games, you know, then after the games, being able to see it on film and, and um, you know, just continue to get better off, off that. So we just miss basically just getting reps and, and, and just being able to, you know, calm down within the scheme and just really become, you know, uh, his own. Chris, what was your first impression when you saw the shape he was in when he showed up at camp? And then once you get into the season, how do you, as a position coach, manage the workload and is it relayed to you like whether he's on a snap count and stuff uh yeah we always collectively as a uh, you know through kyle and uh, and john and the training staff we always monitor um you know where where snap counts are at how much yardage guys are going how much you know throughout a course of a, of a game how much um yardage they cover and what they put into the game and so we uh, collectively, um, you know, start with Kyle, kind of uh, go through what, you know, snap counts that they need to get, you know, during a week of practice and then, you know, going into the next game. Uh, as far as the, the physical condition of Nick, anything that you know, he shows up, I, you just anticipate him looking, you know, like, a, you know, whatever his body fat is, ripped up, veins popping out. I mean, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all because he's a, he's, a guy that is very, very meticulous about his training regimen, what he puts into his body, and just the, the daily grind of uh, what it takes to get his body looking like that. He takes it very, very, very seriously. Well, I, mean, I was just a quick follow-up. Was like his rookie year, he had that high ankle sprain, so nobody knew what kind of whether he was going to be able to make it through much of his rookie year. And then he plays every single game. Did that show you something about just his body, about his tolerance? Yeah, it, yes, it did. Um, you know, coming off when he had that high ankle sprain, just guys I've had that, that's had that in the past, it would have been, I, when it first happened, I thought it would be very difficult for him to get back for the first game. And Nick said it in his mind that I'm not missing my first game of my rookie year. And, uh, you know, there's no telling how many hours he's spent in there with uh, Ben Peterson and Dustin Little in the training room. If you wanted to find him, if you're looking for Nick, 
don't don't call a cell phone either go down to the training room or go in the weight room. He's one of the two players or, or eating. Um, he's <laughs> drinking, one of, drinking uh, green shakes. Yeah, one, no of the, eating. <laughs> one, one of the three places. So pretty pretty easy to find when he was going through that process. He was basically living here, um, getting as much treatment as he could. And, you know, he made it back, uh, you know, early in the season. He wasn't quite 100% yet, but he was able to you know, go out there and obviously make an impact. How was uh, Ken Law's rookie season? A, a whirlwind, you know, with in any any guy last year that had to deal with uh, rookie in rookies in particular that had to go through the COVID year. Um, it's instrumental for a rookie to be able to have, you know, phase one where you can get them in here, teach them the scheme, get them out on the field and do walkthroughs and, and get them in individual drills and then move on to phase two and three where they can get 11 on 11 settings and hear the linebackers make calls. And so he missed out on all that. Um, you know, going, you know, I met with him a lot on Zoom and, and, and shoot by, by the, I don't know, third month of meeting on Zoom. Uh, Ken Law could pretty much regurgitate the playbook, uh, second nature. Then you get out here and you get in a huddle and all of a sudden Fred Warner's making a call and, you know, all of a sudden his eyes get this big and he's like, whoa, hold on a second here. You know, the nerves go up. You know, and then just the, the training in the weight room with an NFL training staff, you know, and, and him not being able really to have anywhere, you know, this, the country got shut down and, and where do you work out? You know, especially as a rookie, it's not a whole lot of guidance in that. And, uh, you know, to try to find little fields or wherever, what, you know, weight rooms weren't available. And so you missed out on all that. So it just not only Kinlaw, but any rookie last year, it's a very difficult year to try to come in and, and be at the, you know, your, your peak performance, you know, throughout the season. But I thought he handled it well. Um, thought, he, thought he got better as the season went on. And, um, um, you know, I wish, you know, unfortunately he had to little knee at the end that uh, cost him the last two games. But, um, you know, I'm excited about uh, Javon because now he's been able to go through that process. He's been here, you know, since February. I've seen him almost every single day. He hasn't left and he's, put a lot of work into to becoming the player that he wants to become. You've had so much success getting the most out of players who haven't produced as much in previous stops. Is there something in particular that you emphasize that's allowed you to get these results? Um, just just pouring everything I have into, into the, not only the top player in the room, but the, the, all the way to the bottom. You know, I don't, I try not to, you know, you see some coaches you may, they may spend a little more time with the starters and kind of the backups just fall in line. I've, I've taken the approach going back I mean, you go back to Detroit, I had guys, Turk McBride, who's early in his career, he's a second round pick, things didn't work out the way he wanted, came to us and, you know, became a very good player for us. Lawrence Jackson, a guy named, you know, Lawrence Jackson got six and a half sacks for us one year. Things didn't work out for him, you know, exactly the way he wanted early in his career. And, you know, we ended up getting him and, you know, became a very productive player for us. George Johnson, Kerry Hyder. I just take a lot of pride in, um, not only, you know, having high expectations of uh, the Nick Bosa's of the world and, uh, you know, the Ken Laws of the world and the Forrest Buckner's of the world, you know, the D Ford's of the world. Also, the guys have had, you know, take a keen interest in the guys that have had to fight, scratch, claw just to get their way into the league. And I just want to help them get better. So um, I try to pour a lot into them and, 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 and maybe, you know, raise their expectations even higher than what they may, you know, actually see themselves being, you know, and. Um, you seem like you really emphasize the get off. Is that one way that you can get the guy to show his, his, his true potential? Yeah, I yeah. mean, um, I, you know, we, we try to um, have enough schematics and enough things to keep people honest, but then it comes a point to where you gotta let players, you know, play with a clear mind and fast legs. And I don't want them out there, you know, we're, you know, we want to get the scheme down so good that it just becomes second nature and you're not worried out there worrying about what do I do on this, what do I do on this, and your brain's, you know, running a million miles an hour. We want to get that crystal clear to where they can go out there and play as fast as they humanly possibly can play, and that helps guys. When they go out there and play fast, and our, you know, I think our scheme and what we do within our scheme helps guys that – you know, maybe out of, I don't know, maybe they don't have an NFL career if, you know, you don't turn them loose like like we do and let them play fast and let them play free. And, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, it, it's not a freelance scheme. It's it's very technical. You know, people think, well, we just get off. But we got to be more perfect sometimes with our technique because we're getting off so violent. And if we're, if we're off of 
half inch here, half inch there, if our tilt's not exactly right, if our stance not exactly right, if our aiming point's not exactly right, then you start running into issues. So um, it's one of the big things. Is it, it's it's pretty. It's more technical than what people think. Um, just the uh, just the detail that goes into it. So, um, but yes, I do think that. Our scheme and the way the, 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 the attack mentality, the get-off mentality helps guys carve out careers and become productive players where maybe other schemes wouldn't allow that.